Um, I know a few weeks ago I showed you pictures of our orphanage being built in Uganda. Um, we were able to send uh, enough money this week to pretty much finish it, I think. So hopefully next Sunday I'm able to show you pictures or the Sunday after of uh, um, what's happening in Uganda. But Pastor Alfred texted me this morning. He is suffering from malaria and typhoid. So if you could be praying for him, please. It, these are common things there. You know, I mean, he's always taking his kids to the doctor for because of malaria and stuff. So, you know, the, it's, it's really real over there, and it, and it happens all the time. But please keep him in prayer, you know, that God would give him strength and healing, and uh, he'd have the victory there. Amen? All right, praise God. Today, the title of my message is uh, Christ Took Our Place, but I think if I could reword it, it would just be what the theme for the mother-daughter breakfast was, was when love came down, because I, it really... Christ took our place because he loves us so much, amen? He loves us so much. So why don't you stand with me? We're going to read out of Romans chapter 5, verses 6 through 11. And Danny, if you could get me a bottle of water out of that center room, that'd be great. Romans chapter 5, verse 6. For when we were still without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely a righteous man will... Will one die? Yet perhaps for a good man, someone would even dare to die. But God, everybody say, but God, demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son. Much more, having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received the reconciliation. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to go through your word. I pray that all of our hearts would be opened wide, we'd be transformed by the hearing of the word. And Father, that when we leave this place, we leave uplifted from being in your presence. So Lord, we open up our hearts to your word today, Father, in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen, Amen. You may be seated. You know, there was a, a movie that was out recently, and... Um, Man, every time I go to say the name of the movie, the, the name just jumps right out of my head. So I don't know the name of the movie. Um, but it's about a guy named Desmond Doss, and he was in World War II. And um, Hacksaw Ridge. There you go. Thank you. Um, and he wanted to serve his country out of love for this country. And he wanted to be able to go in and, and um, not to kill but to bring life. He didn't want to carry a weapon into war. He wanted to go to war without a weapon. And when they found this out in boot camp that he didn't want to shoot a gun, man, that made his sergeant so mad. And, and just really, you know, he kind of turned the, the guys on his regiment against him so that they would beat him up and, you know, really have their way with him. And Desmond was just determined, I want to go to war to bring life. I don't want to go and kill anybody. And so, I mean, he went through this big ordeal with the leaders and everything, and they finally said, okay, you want to go to war with not a gun? without a gun? That's fine, but you're going to the front line. So they sent him out to the front line, and when they, they, there was a beach, and the, the Hacksaw Ridge was a big uh, a cliff, and it had a, one of those big nets that you climb on it, you know, big squares, and, and they climb up the net, and then they go and they fight. It was um, fighting the, the Japanese in Okinawa, and... And so he went up there with the guys, and, and they fought all day, and people were getting shot. And, and, and it, when the evening time came, they retreated back down the net. But they left all the wounded soldiers up there. And Desmond went there to save lives. So he began in the night to get these bodies, drag them to the edge of the cliff, and lower them down by net. And he actually, that night, he got shot four times, and he saved 75 lives that night. They honored him. They gave him the, uh, the bronze star um, for aiding the wounded soldiers under fire. 
And like I said, he was wounded four times in Okinawa, and it was evacuated after that, that battle time. It was um, an act of love because the men didn't like him. It was unconditional love for them because they couldn't stand him because he wouldn't carry a gun. But when he drug them out of their holes and took them to the edge of that cliff and, and lowered them down, they began to respect him and honor him. And he was made a hero. Mel Gibson even made a movie about it. Hacksaw Ridge. It just came out earlier this year. Pretty tough movie to watch because it's so brutal what they went through. But they took this man who saved 75 lives and they made a hero out of him. Gave him the medal, made the movie, everything. But let's look at what Jesus did. He died for all of mankind. For everyone that was ever born before us, after us, he paid the price for everybody, amen? Not just 75 people, but look at your neighbor and say, he did it for you. He did it for you. And he did it because he loves us. He loves us. Tell your neighbor, he loves us. He loves us. Jesus, knowing the evil things that we would do, knowing our attitude, knowing the way we would walk and talk, knowing the sins that we committed, he said, I'm going to go to the cross for Delonda because I know I'm going to love her. So today I want to just unpack this scripture that we just read and let's experience the love of God today, amen? Because number one, God did this out of love. He did it out of love. God has a deep love for his creation. And I'm not talking about the universe. I'm not talking about the mountains and the rivers. He has a deep love for you. Jesus didn't come and die for the mountains and the rivers. Jesus came to die for who? You! Amen. Me. He came to die for us. Even knowing how bad we'd mess up. Even knowing the mistakes we would make. John 3.16, and many of you have heard this. For God so loved, everybody say loved. loved. The world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. Now, when we think of everlasting life, many times we think of the future. But everlasting life begins at the inception of Christ into your life. That's when everlasting life begins. It's not just something that I'm going to do when I go there. It's something I'm doing now. I'm living everlasting life right now with Jesus. I don't have to wait to get there to meet him. I've already met him, amen. I celebrate my life with him. He is in me. His spirit resides in me. It's not something that's futuristic. Everlasting life. It's right now. Jesus wants to have an intimate relationship with you right now. Because he loves you. Now, Delonda loves me. Amen. Thank you. She, <laughs> all right. <laughs> but she, she loves me, and she, she's always, you know, wants me to have an intimate conversation with her. And so I... I, I, I deep. I, I try. I'm, I'm not real good at inti- <laughs> Don't shake your head. Come on. Don't tell me. I'm telling myself. I'm not real good at intimate, you know, conversations, but, but I've learned how to be intimate with God and I'm learning to be intimate with my wife. Now, I've been 36 years. So I'm still learning to be intimate with my wife. I'm still learning how to have an intimate conversation with her. Sometimes she says, well, you know, this must be the cross that she has to bear, you know. <laughs> But having an intimate relationship is what God desires from you. He doesn't want to be some far off thing that you can't touch. He sent Jesus so that we can connect now with God. Amen? We don't have to, to, uh, it's not a far off thing. It's right now. Ephesians chapter 3, 17 and 19 through 19 says that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith that you being rooted and grounded in love, everybody say love, Love. may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width, the length, the depth, the height, to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. God's love, everybody say love, passes our knowledge. 
God's love is outside the realm of what our knowledge can comprehend. See, we live in a 3D world. We know, we know up, we know, you know, we don't cross, and we know this way. You know, we got three dimensions, but his love is four dimensions. His, his love is supernatural love. It's the agape love. It's the unconditional love. It's the love that loves you no matter what. You said, oh, but you don't know what I've done. It doesn't matter what you've done. God loves you, amen? He loves you so much. And it's outside, it's outside that realm of what we can comprehend because we're in this three-dimensional kind of thing, but God's love is so supernatural. And he loves us so much. And we have to just learn to really receive his love, amen? To receive the love of God in our hearts and our minds. To step into that supernatural place of, of loving God, receiving God's love, but actually to where we can begin to love our enemies. That we can begin to love those who curse you. That we can begin to love people that don't like us. That we can, our hearts will just explode with love because he loves us in spite of ourselves. And he's asking us to love people in spite of them. Because we all know people that we don't like. We don't you know, re really have a hard time loving. But God is calling us to use his love through us. That fourth dimension, that supernatural love that he gives us. He wants us to use it. And out of this love that he has for us, we are, number two, justified by the blood of Jesus. Now, justification means this. It means just as if I've never sinned. So, Delanda is covered by the blood of Jesus. She is forgiven by the blood of Jesus. Amen. He died on the cross for all of her sins. She's forgiven. She's healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. And she's covered on the blood. Now, I live with Delana, and, and she's not perfect. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> she's close. Okay. But when God looks down on her through the blood of Jesus, he'll argue with me. He'll say she is perfect because she's under the blood. See, because under the blood... You're covered in the blood of Jesus. You're forgiven of all your sins, amen? You are, you are perfect to God. He looks down, he says, Karen, you look so great today. Oh, you're so pure, you're so holy, you're so wonderful. You're the beloved of God. That's what he says. And you've got you to learn to receive that, amen? But we, we look in a mirror, and we say, hmm, pastor's a little nuts. I am, but just for the love of God, amen? Just for the love God loves you that much so that he has justified you. You are justified. It's just as if you've never sinned. He sees the blood of Jesus, and he thinks you're okay. He loves you. His sacrificial blood is the agency for cleansing, forgiving, and redeeming us. Amen? He cleanses us. He forgives us. He redeems us. He redeems our life from destruction, amen, so that we can ask him to cleanse us from everything that's not of him. We can ask him to cleanse us of addictions. We can ask him to cleanse us of sickness. We can ask him to cleanse us of hatred. We can ask him to cleanse us of anger. We can ask him to cleanse us of lust. We can ask him to cleanse us of sin, amen. All we got to do is what? Come on. Ask. Ask, just ask. Man, I remember there's things when I wasn't walking with Jesus that I tried to give up and quit. Just couldn't do it. But when I came to Jesus, I said, hey, could you take this away? Bam, and left. You mean just like that? Just like that. He is here to help. He's here to make us free. Amen? We can ask him to forgive us of all the things, everything else we've done wrong and everything we might do. When we continue in sin and keep doing them in our lives, it's when it starts getting a little rough for us. Because when we continue in sin, in the same thing, doing it over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, you know, we start peeling back <laughs> what God's trying to do for us. And we start stepping out. You know, no one can snatch you out of the hand of God. No one can snatch you. 
But I believe you can jump out of the hand of God. See, and when we continue in, our, in ways that, that God can't deal with in you, we're jumping out. But He redeems our life. Because when we're, when we're not repentant, we keep doing them. We need to be repentant, amen? We need to repent when we know we're doing it wrong. But redemption means this. He redeems our lives. A release secured by the payment of a ransom. Deliverance, setting free. So, it's, it's like Dion got a speeding ticket in his truck, and I paid it for him. Dion said, why would you do that for me? Because of love. And that's what God did. Dion sinned, and Delanda sinned, and Jonah sinned, and y'all sinned, amen, because we all, fall, all sin and fall short of the glory of God. But that's why Jesus came, and he died, so that we could be covered under the blood, so that it looks like we've never, what? Sinned. We've never sinned, amen? Now, if we could just start getting that into our hearts and our minds, and we'd, start, we'd stop playing around with sin and just living a holy life, amen? When you get it into your heart, you're like, wow, and, you, and sin just starts becoming so offensive to you. Because I know people that have done drugs and alcohol and smoking and everything, and when they got delivered from it, and, and they're walking away from all that stuff, and then they see people, I love this one, People that used to cuss a lot. They used to cuss and swear and everything and carry on. And then they got redeemed and the Lord delivered them and changed their language. And, and then they get around people that cuss and redeem them. They're like, oh, what are you doing? You know, what are you, what are you saying? You know, what, what's, why is those words coming out of your mouth? You know, because we've just, we've been redeemed. You know, it's like it's just become so bad for us now. But it's this very thing that we used to do. But now it's offensive to us. And we don't want anything to do with it. The New Testament, it designates deliverance. It des- redeem, it designates through Christ, deliverance through Christ from evil and the penalty of sin. We're redeemed. Delivered from evil and the penalty of sin. You can't be good enough to cover that price had to be the blood. You know, I was reading about the prodigal son, not the prodigal son, the rich young ruler this week. And, you know, he says, hey, I kept all the law. I keep the laws. I don't do this. I don't do that. And, and, uh, but, you know, he's saying he kept all the law, but we know that Jesus came because we can't keep all the law. So he was deceived in himself. But it says that Jesus looked at him and he loved him. He loved him. And he said, okay, just one thing. Sell everything you have and follow me. It'll be good. And the guy went away sad. Even with the love of God right there in his face. Because you read it, it just says, and Jesus loved him. See, Jesus wasn't there to condemn him for his stuff. Jesus already knew what was going on in his life. Jesus knew what he needed to do. But Jesus also knew that he probably wasn't going to do it. And Jesus loved him. Our part is to believe Jesus, amen, and to receive what he has for us. This is how much God loves us. He made a way for us to the Father out of love for you and me. He loves you. He loves you. And when we receive this justification from God, we are number three, saved from the wrath. Saved from wrath. You see, God and sin don't mix. They don't go together, okay? God has a hard time looking down on sin. You know, even when he flooded the earth with Noah, he said, it's their sin that's come up before me. And I can't stand it. So I got to do something to get rid of that stuff. And so he's done something for that for us today, the blood of Jesus, amen. But we're saved from the wrath. Romans 5, 17, it says, For by one man's offense death reigned through the one, much more than those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one, Jesus Christ. Now we know that Adam and Eve sinned in the garden. 
Adam sinned, and sin entered the world. So that when we are born, we are born into sin. So, you know, I mean, you just watch little kids. It's amazing how mean little kids can be. You know, little little one-year-old, two-year-old, three-year-old, you're like, you know, I used to tell Greg all the time, boy, you better get them boys saved. <laughs> they're rowdy little guys, you know. They've mellowed out now they're getting older, but, man, when they were little, I like, ooh, that one needs to get saved, Greg. You better hurry up, man. <laughs> saved from this wrath, you know. Because, listen, when the day of the Lord comes, if you read the minor prophets in the Old Testament, Almost every one of them talks about the day of the Lord. And the day of the Lord is when God pours out his wrath. The day of the Lord is not a good thing, okay? The day of the Lord is when you're going to believe, and I'm hoping for, that we are not here when it happens, amen? That we are in heaven, that we've been raptured out, we've been taken to heaven, and that the day of the Lord can happen, and that we've been saved from the wrath that is going to come upon the people that are left behind. Because when that wrath is poured out and God starts opening up them bowls and, you know, and the scrolls, it's going to get nasty. It's going to get ugly. It's going to be a scary place to be. Okay? It's gonna, it says that even people would try to kill themselves, but they're not going to be able to die. Because it's going to be so bad, the wrath that is going to come. And we do not want that wrath. Amen? But God, out of love, made a way for us to be free from that wrath. We're justified before God out of the love He has for us. And now we don't have to suffer that wrath. Amen? It's not based on how good we've been in the past. It's based on God's love for you. Look at your neighbor and say, God loves you. He loves you. He loves you so much that he sent Jesus to pay the price for your sin. Amen? To save you from this wrath. Jesus loves me, this I know. Man, if you sing that song, you know, I, I, I'm not going to do it right now. Um, I did it in my car the other day. Jesus loves me, this I know. And I made up about 10 different verses, Pastor Jesse, that were so good, man. I was so blessed. I was just experiencing the love of God because I was just singing, Jesus loves me. And I started singing how he loves me, how he, what he's done in my life. I just started declaring it in my car. Oh, I had a Holy Ghost meeting in my car. And because of this supernatural act of love, it leads us to number four, Reconciliation with the Father. We are now reconciled to God the Father. We can be in relationship with Him. Reconciled means to change, to exchange, to reestablish, restore relationships, make things right, remove an enmity. Five times the Word of God refers to, refers to God's reconciling us to Himself through the life death and resurrection of his son Jesus. Whether speaking of God or man or husband and wife, reconciliation describes the reestablishing of a proper, loving, interpersonal, everybody say interpersonal, relationship which has been broken or disrupted. Because of what Adam did, the relationship with mankind was broken, but because of what Jesus did, we've been reconciled back to God so that now we can come in and go out and we can have relationship with God the Father. And I'm here today to tell you that God the Father wants to have relationship with you. He desires to talk with you. He desires to spend time with you. If you're watching by internet, He wants to fellowship with you. This is his desire. It's not just, oh, I went to church on Sunday, I'm a Christian. No, did you talk to him on Monday? Tuesday. You say, well, I don't have time to come to the prayer meeting. I don't care if you come to the prayer meeting, but pray at home. Pray, connect with God some way, sometime, all the time, amen? Connect with God, get with him, talk with him. Say, hey, God, you don't have to do it in the king chamber. Yeah, though, I walk through the back. No, you can say, hey, God, this is Ron. You not use your own name, though. <laughs> but you can connect with God. Because we've been reconciled to God. The relationship has been restored. It's not, as I said, it's not something that's a far off. It's not something that we have to wish for. It's not something that we're hoping for. Oh, I can't wait to get to heaven until I can spend time with Jesus. You can spend time with Him right now because you've been reconciled to God. It's not futuristic, it's now. 
It's having a desire to meet with God. If you have the desire to meet with God, you can. You can experience a closeness and intimacy with God. Going deep into His presence. It's about being intimate with God the Father. You know, we, we, we are so shallow, though. We really are. We say, hey, Karen, how you doing? God bless you. And we just keep going. We don't stop and say, hey, Karen, how you doing really for real? What's going on in your life? You doing okay? All right. So it's, it's, it's going deeper it's, instead of being shallow. Hey, Dion, man, good. Hey, good to see you, bro. Yeah, hi. How you doing? Yeah, I'm so glad you came today. Oh, God bless you, Barry. Oh, Pastor Rob, yeah, good to see you, man. Yeah. It's being intimate. What's going on, bro? What are you reading? I like that. Reconciliation. Romans chapter 5. We are reconciled to God so that we can talk to Him, that we can listen to Him. Because Abe, as much as we like to talk, God likes to speak too. He likes to speak to us. You know, and if we would just make the time to listen, you might be amazed by what you hear. But I, I get it. People are afraid. People are really afraid to hear from heaven. They're afraid to hear what God... I mean, you, you can read in the, in the Old Testament, in the first five books, you know, the Israelites, they tell Moses, why don't you go up on the mountain and hear from God and come back and tell us what he says. Most people would rather a prophet come and prophesy to them than to get on their knees themselves. You don't need a prophet to come and tell you. You need to tune into heaven and, and be reconciled with the Father and let Him speak into your life. And when He does that, you'll be amazed. Don't be afraid about what He's going to tell you. If He tells you, hey, I want you to move to Africa, then He'll make a way for you to move to Africa. He'll put a desire in your heart to move to Africa. It'll flow into you. You'll be like, hey, Pastor, I'm going to go to Africa. Amen. They're really like, no, we're not going. We're going in January, late January next year to Africa. You want to go, you let me know. It costs you a couple grand. Yolanda's going, Pastor Jesse's going, Yolanda's going. I'm thinking about going. But he doesn't want a shallow relationship with you. You don't have to send someone else to have a relationship with him for you. And because of this great love that he has extended to us, look at your neighbor and say, he loves me. Because of this great love that he's extended to us, number five, he says, rejoice. Rejoice. Everybody say rejoice. rejoice. Paul tells us rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. He doesn't say rejoice in the Lord when everything's good. He doesn't say rejoice in the Lord when you feel like it. He says rejoice in the Lord. Always, all the time, rejoice, amen? All the time, be lifting up the name above every name. Whether it's on a screen or we have a live person here or you're in your car or at your home, we have to learn to rejoice in the Lord. You get bad news, turn to the Lord and begin to rejoice. I know it's not easy because, you know, bad news is tough. Doctor gives you a bad report, it's tough. You know, doctor gives you a bad, bad report, you don't rejoice because you got a bad report. You rejoice because the Lord's your healer. I rejoice in you today, Father, because by your stripes I am healed. So, Lord, I pray that my body gets in alignment with what you have said, what is written here about me and not what the doctor says about me. You know, and it's just like you walk with the Lord. Some of your health issues have to deal with you don't take care of yourself. See, if I don't take care of myself spiritually according to the Word of God, then I'm going to get sick spiritually. 
See, and it's the same thing physically. If we don't take care of ourselves physically, we're going to get sick physically. There's things going to happen. We've got to be aware of what's going on in our bodies, amen? And we've got to be aware of what's going on in the Word of God so that we can get it in us, so that we don't get spiritually sick, amen? So that we have cause for rejoicing. Rejoicing is in the Bible 192 times. Krista, if you've got to tell Connor 192 times to do something, you're going to be a little upset. <laughs> Connor's my grandson. Krista's my daughter. Hallelujah. Connor, I mean, uh, Mike and Krista are here with us today from Ohio. Hallelujah. My, grand, my grandkids are out there in the nursery. But if God's got to tell us 192 times to rejoice, don't you think he wants us to rejoice? Don't you think he wants us to rejoice all the time? That's like shouting it. Rejoice! That's what God is telling you. Put on a spirit of rejoicing. You say, oh, pastor, you don't know what I'm going through. Well, you don't know what I go through. Talk about it. I ain't going to tell you, man. <laughs> I, I, I uncover myself enough. <laughs> but when you're rejoicing, you're not complaining. See, because when they were in the wilderness and they complained, God said, stand back, Moses, I'm going to open up the ground and swallow some of them. God hates complaining. So when I'm rejoicing, I'm not complaining. When I'm rejoicing, I'm not being negative. When I'm rejoicing, I'm rejoicing. I'm being positive. I'm, I'm declaring who God is, what he's doing. When I'm rejoicing, I'm expressing the love that I have for God. Amen? I'm rejoicing in the Lord. Rejoice! Rejoice always. Rejoice in the good. Rejoice in the bad. Rejoice in God no matter what you're going through. Put on a spirit of rejoicing. Are they going to play that song again? Oh my gosh, I think I just need to chill out. I've been standing here for 30 minutes rejoicing. Really? This church just sings too long. We're supposed to rejoice always. Amen? We're supposed to press into God. We're supposed to lift up our voices high, whether it's on a screen or it's live, or you've got to make it up yourself. <laughs> Pastor Rob, we should have a Sunday one time where we got no music and we just make it up as we go. Amen. Just leave a couple of microphones up here and we just come up and we, we rejoice. See, now, like in China, that'd be no problem. Because you go to places like that and you say, pray, and everybody starts praying louder than you can think. They just start screaming out their prayers. I remember we were, I was in this one place one time with a group of people, and I was so amped up, man. I'm just going, and I'm preaching, and I'm preaching. I'm, and my translator's like, you need to calm down. <laughs> and and I'm, I'm, the, I'm, it was my first time there, and I'm crying, and I'm preaching, and I mean, I am just so overwhelmed by the Spirit of God. And, and my translator says, calm down, Ron. Come on, you got to quiet down. The neighbors are going to hear you. So he told the people what he said. And they said, let him go. We are the neighbors. And so, well, wind that guy back up, man. Let him go. I was, I was so excited. I, man, the presence of God was so heavy that the people were sitting on eight-inch stools. And I just said, I had to stop preaching. I said, I just need to lay hands on them. I just need to pray. And I went out and I just started laying hands on the people. The power of God was so strong. My hand was vibrating like this because they were bouncing off those little eight-inch seats. The presence of God was so heavy in that place. I could have played basketball with them because they were bouncing. It was incredible. See, but when we put on that rejoicing, it's incredible what God does. You say, oh, pastor, I, I, get, I just tired. Well, go to bed earlier. Get up! Praise the Lord! Rejoice! Put on rejoicing! Rejoice that God loves you! Rejoice that you can be reconciled to God today, amen? Rejoice in the Lord. Always. Oh, but what I'm going through, Pastor. 
It doesn't matter what you're going through. I mean, I know the Lord cares, but He still wants you to rejoice. Rejoicing will move that mountain. Rejoicing just breaks the yoke. Rejoicing it, it does powerful things. Rejoice in the Lord, always. Again, I say what? Rejoice. Mm, hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, Jesus loves you. Praise God. Let's pray. Hallelujah, Father. Oh, glory to you, Father God. Oh, Lord, we just receive the love that you have for us today. We love you so much, Father. We thank you for what Jesus did, that he's justified us just as if we never sinned so that we can be reconciled back to the Father and saved from the wrath that is to come. But, Lord, that we can have intimate, deep, personal relationship with you today out of the love that you have for us. And you were so willing to send Jesus for us, to make a way for us, to die for us. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We are so thankful for you today. Maybe you're here today and you say, Pastor Ron, I need that justification. I need to be under that blood of Jesus just as if I've never sinned. I need to commit my life to Jesus today. I need to just get in and get under and get going with God. If that's you today, just raise your hand at me right now. You know that's you. Amen, 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 amen. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. And maybe today you say, Pastor Ron, I need that love today. I need to not only know that he loves me, I just need to feel his love today. If that's you, just raise your hand right now. You just need that love of God right now. Amen, amen. Why don't we stand? And I'm going to ask if all the altar workers would come right now. Just come to the front right now. And if you need the love of God today, or you raise your hand, you say, I need to make that commitment today. I need to come into Jesus. I want you to step out of your seats and come right now. Just come on and come to the front and get to, with one of these people and let them just pray for you and minister to you right now. Because the Spirit of God is here. Come on, more hands than that went up. Don't be afraid. You raise your hand, just come on. Come and experience the love of God. Come and, and get committed to Jesus today. Holy surrender to Jesus. Because He loves you. And he's made a way. You don't have to go through this life alone. You don't have to go through, keep living in pain and misery. But you can live in the love of God today. Father, we give you praise today. We thank you for that loving kindness you have for us. And Father, I pray that we would all know your love. Lord, that we would have that personal relationship with you. And that, Lord, that we'd not let anything get in between us. Lord, that the love of God would fill our hearts, even as you declared in the Word of God today, as you declared in Romans chapter 5, verse 5 today. Hallelujah. It says that now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. So, Lord, we just receive that love. Just raise your hands to the Lord right now and say, I receive. Lord, we receive your love today. Let the people rejoice always and be glad that, Lord, that we've been saved from this wrath that is to come, and, Lord, that we would continually rejoice in you and build relationship with you. I pray you cover every person here today as they go their way, and, Lord, that you protect them, that you bless them, that you heal them, Father, that your joy would be our strength. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen and amen. Let's give the Lord a hand today. Hallelujah. Have a great day. We'll see you Wednesday night as we finish out the book of Philippians this week. Come and rejoice with us.